Like if I was going to work a week and only work two days, it would be Friday, Saturday. Like if any time I was going to take off, it would be, it would be Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Like if um, weekends, it's like, like you have to sacrifice a little bit. I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. Welcome to the Living Hope Agency Call. Uh, I'm excited for tonight, our topic, which is how not to just survive, but how to thrive here at FFL. I'm excited because we have a handful of different people who are going to come on here and share their perspective. We've got uh, sales managers, senior sales managers, vice presidents, people who've gone out there and they've protected 20, 30, 40, 50 families in a month, some 20, 30, 40, 50 families in a week. Okay, so I'm excited to be able to have them share some of their perspective. I think it's just important to understand that, guys, this is a, it's a real business. And if there's anybody on here that is just here as a hobby, they're just here as a part timer, um, you know, you can go out and you can help, you know, five, 10, 15 families in a month, and that's totally okay. But to be able to truly thrive in this business, the theme of this call is how do you get past 15 families? Because 15 families, if you're building a business, 15 families, if you want to reinvest back into yourself, 15 families, if you want to do more than just pay your bills, you're just going to be surviving. We want to teach you all how to thrive. We want to show you how to get to 30 families and above, because that's really the point where you got some breathing room, you know, 15 families. It sounds like a lot. 15 families and commissions is more than most of y'all have ever made in any previous business. But when you take taxes, lead spend, chargebacks, pretty much cut that in half, about 50% is what I consider the net, depending on what it is and how good your ROI is. 50 to 60% net on what you actually issue is what you're going to get to keep. So now you take out your personal bills. What do you have left? That's what it comes down to. So it's not just about surviving. It's about thriving. I heard Sean say something earlier today on a podcast. He said, we seek out validation that everything that we're doing, you know, hey, it, it's going to be okay. Okay. If I just help 15 families a month, I'll be able to pay my bills. If I just help 15 families a month, I'll get by. But it's like, did you, did you actually just join this business to just get by? Or did you do it because you saw an opportunity to do something you've never done before? And Sean said, hey, actually, it's not going to be okay. And that might be kind of a sobering thought for some of y'all who are hearing this for the first time. Like, hey, if I'm just helping 15 families a month and I'm full time, it's not going to be okay. Because all it takes is one bad week, two weeks off for you to put yourself in a position where you're not going to like where you are. So I think it's fair if we tell you the truth tonight. I think it's fair that everybody's totally honest with you. And I think everybody here would hope and expect that you're going to get the truth and the honesty in this business. Because at the end of the day, we talk about anybody can do this. It's a fact. Anybody could do this, but most people won't do what's necessary to actually make it in this business. Whether it's this business or any commission-based sales industry, most people won't do what's necessary. Family First Life is a special place because it's unlike anywhere else in the entire industry. The commissions that people are earning, I've never seen anything like it. But at the end of the day, those people are working harder than anybody I've ever seen in any industry on the planet. So guys, that's just our intro for today. I'm excited to hear from a handful of amazing speakers. The first person I want to bring on here today is one of my great friends, Mr. Josh Lockhart out of Atlanta, Georgia. He is a vice president of FFL Gloves Off. And uh, Josh and I joke, you know, he definitely does not play with the gloves on. Okay. He's, he's a gloves off kind of a guy. And I think it's funny because we always joke around whenever anybody's not taking this super seriously on his team, whenever somebody's not buying enough leads, they're not working the weekends. I'm like, dude, you're playing with the gloves on. You got to take the gloves off. So I, I love that, Josh. And I'd love for you to just kind of come on here and just, you know, we've had some conversations, you know, what are the things that you think, you know, we'll start off with just a couple um, that really help somebody thrive here at FFL and not just survive. And we'll kind of go back and forth with a few questions. Yeah, absolutely. Can you hear me? Okay. Can hear you great. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing that attracted me to FFL was of course the high comp, but uh, it was, it was the opportunity to go buy interest as it was put to me. I thought that was just a crazy concept. You can, instead of going and spending all of your time trying to hit up the malls and friends and family, uh, you can literally just go buy interest, i.e. leads and boom, there you go. You can, you can call them up, set an appointment, go see them. 
And uh, that's what really attracted me here. I don't, I've, I've been around the insurance industry for a long time. I didn't know that was a thing. I don't know how I didn't know it, but I didn't know it. And so what it was told to me when, uh, cause I wanted to start full time. I wanted to do the big numbers. Like I saw it was, Hey, go set 30 appointments, you know, sit on 20, sell on 10. Uh, you're going to have to spend 1500, two grand a week on leads to do that. And uh, I was all in on that. And what I've seen over the last year is of course, you know, somebody might start part-time, full-time, whatever. I'm not here to, to debate, you know, what you should start at, but what happens is somebody gets started and they want to, they want to try a little bit. So they maybe just buy a little bit of leads, right? If I just buy a little bit of leads and that works, then I'll buy more leads. And there, there's a minimum threshold that you have to hit. And if you don't hit it, you're just going to hurt yourself, i.e. waste money, right? What does that look like? That looks like, you know, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to try to buy a little bit of leads. I'll buy 20, I'll buy 20 leads and see what happens. And you call all 20, they don't answer. Now you're upset. This doesn't work. Leads don't work. I'm out. As a matter of fact, my wife, uh, when we first started, she, she actually sold first. She was out in the field first, did very well for herself on a very, very, like, she only had a couple hours a day uh, in the middle of the day. And I remember one time she was only going to run like three or four appointments for the week. She, you know, she's got to take care of everything else in our house. And she bought $200 of leads. And she was really upset about it. She's like, man, I called the 200, you know, the, the how, whatever, how many ever leads she got. I, I called them all and I only booked like whatever, one appointment or two appointments, whatever it was. And she was upset of that. And I was like, I was like, hey, listen, uh, don't, this is the only time I got away with talking to my wife like this. I said, don't ever let me catch you only spending $200 of leads. If you're going to spend money on leads, at least spend 500 because I'd rather spend more with the chance of, you know, only getting one sale and making my money back, right? So how much should you spend? Well, I mean, as much as one sale is worth to you because then you can keep going and, and have a chance. So I'd say that's number one is spending enough on leads to give yourself that minimum threshold for a chance to win versus playing small, waste your money, get hurt. That's good, man. So we're let's stay on the topic of leads. So, I mean, we, we've had a handful of people, not just, you know, you, not just me, who have started some agents who they just say, you know, I am going to continue to sell friends and family because they trust me. They like me, they respect me. They're willing to support me. Um, but at some point the friends and family runs out. So talk to us about what that looks like for somebody who just, they struggle to buy leads. Like wh why are they afraid? Like, are they afraid to buy leads? Cause they're not, you know, confident in their skill set. They just, they're, they're looking for, there's nothing wrong with referrals guys. Referrals are amazing. We're probably spoiled with FFL um, with leads. And, you know, we don't necessarily have to always ask for referrals, but you know, why does somebody just work friends and family and why are they afraid to buy leads? What do you think that reason is? Well, yeah, I'm just going to take my gloves off and, and tell you what I really think, but you know, number one, yeah. Calling leads is a lot of work, right? Um, you know, it was told to me, Hey, on, on Monday, you set 15 appointments for Tuesday, Wednesday, you want to run a 30, 30 week appointment schedule. And I think you should do that whether you're doing telesales or in home, and so like today, you know, the goal was 15, I set 21 and it's a lot of work. It took me like all day to do that. So I'm pounding the phones all day. It's boring. You know, here's the things I hear. It's boring. It's a lot of work. People hang up on me. People say bad things to me. None of it, which is comfortable. Right. And I got other things to do. I got to go pick up my daughter. I got to go eat lunch. I got to have a life, like all the stuff that we all have to do. Let's face it. So it's easy to talk to the same people over and over again. Hey, you ready for your life insurance? You ready for life insurance? We know them. It's easy to talk to them. And that's great. We, you know, you all should, but the reality is like Jamie said, that's going to run out at some point. Chargebacks is a real thing, right? So let's say you go help 20, 30 families, a few of them charge back. Now you have debt with the carriers the carriers want that debt. If you don't pay it, they're going to let you go. And now you might, your insurance career might be in jeopardy. No one wants that. Not only that, but if anybody wants to build an agency, right? If you want to bring on other people, have them come into the fold, you know, help them to be successful, they're going to do what you do. And if you're not buying leads, set enough appointments and going out there and doing it, what are they going to do? They're not going to do that anyway. The whole opportunity you know, sits on the back of high comp and leads, right? So if you would have recruited me 
15 years ago when I got in the insurance injury for the first time at 23, I didn't know anybody. And so that's why I didn't do any business when I first started. But if you said, here's a stack of leads, they'll, they'll buy, call, say this and set appointments, I would have worked day and night and probably did pretty well and wouldn't be at FFL, but that never happened. So if you don't buy leads, your team won't buy leads and you're just shooting your business in the foot before it ever gets off the ground. I think what I'm hearing is that people who don't want to buy leads, they're trying to figure out a way to like get around the work. They're trying to figure out a way to, to shortcut success. They want to figure out a way to do it without investing any money. You know, I sent a text to someone before this and I was like, hey, scared money, don't make no money. And it's like, it's, it's, it's true. At the end of the day, if you're afraid to invest into leads, you're, you're afraid to invest into your business, maybe you shouldn't be in business. And it, it's unfortunate to say that, but I can't tell you how many people where, you know, the simple switch where they just go from investing, you know, $200 in leads and they're working that same batch of leads for two weeks in a row versus that first time that they decide to get a thousand dollars worth of leads, they give themselves enough opportunities. Um, they take that and they turn it into obviously an ROI where they can reinvest into leads and put some money away it's a game changer. It's like the light bulb goes off. And I love, that's one of my favorite things to see in this business is when somebody has the leads light bulb go off and they're like, oh my gosh, if I just do this, I can do it over and over and over again. You're telling me that if I protect one family and this is the average commission that I'm going to make my money back. What if I helped like four or five families? What if I got really good and I started helping 10 families in a week off that lead purchase? And then you're just telling me I can do it over and over and over and over again. And it can be predictable. Because friends and family is not predictable because it's like, when are they ready? Everyone's different. You know, it, it always changes. So Josh, any final thoughts on, you know, how someone can thrive here, not just survive? Yeah, well, um, you, I think you maybe said this once upon a time, um, and, I, and it's so true that you can go from zero to helping 10 families a month by, by learning and getting better, right? Learning, learning some, everybody wants to know the products. They say, if I can just learn the products, I can get better. It's like, eh, it's really 80% of the phone, but you know, whatever. But once you get to that help in 10 families a month, it's literally about you spend your way to the top, right? You can't, you can't get so much better that you're now helping 20 and 30 families a month. You just literally have to spend more money on leads. Simple as that. Well, thank you so much, Josh. We really appreciate your insight. Um, everybody give a you know, JL in the comments here, if you thought that Josh gave us some pretty good value. Okay, let's move on to our next special guest. We'll bring on Mr. Joseph Whipple. He is out there in Charlotte, North Carolina. We've got a handful of guys at the Charlotte office right now who are coming on. Uh, Joseph, did you make it on? Yes, sir. Can you hear me well? I can hear you great, man. Um, so guys, Joseph Whipple, brand new sales manager, meaning that his team is helping over 50 families in a month. And Joseph pretty quickly found his way to being able to help 30 families in a month himself. Um, he took it very seriously. He was super teachable. He was super coachable. Um, you know, kind of talk to us a little bit about that, Joseph, about how you shortened that learning curve so quickly. And you just kind of said, I'm going to be teachable and coachable. I'm going to do exactly what they tell me to do. Like, where does that even come from? Because not everybody comes into this business. They say, I'm going to do it my own way. You know, why did you just decide I'm going to do exactly what Mike says? I think it comes from seeing whoever brought you into this business, actually doing what they're telling you to do. And that was Mike from day one. You know, he broke down the, the whole roadmap, the whole system. He showed me that, that he was doing what it took. So, I mean, I really think I would have been crazy to not do what he said because he was literally doing it in front of me and showing me the results. I'd never done it before. So there was no reason for me not to do what he said. Um, if that makes sense. Um, that's, yeah. that's, that's why, that's why. <laughs> I love it, man. So, you know, when, when we first asked that question, you know, what does it take to, you know, not just survive, but to thrive in FFL, what were the types of things that came to mind for you? Yeah. So um, basically I think a lot of people, they think they see that 30 families helped in a month and it's a big number and, and they don't, it's not really possible in their minds because they've never done it before. But I think what you have to do is break it down and figure out exactly what you need to do each week, each day, you know, each dial day to figure out how to get there. You have to break it down on the roadmap. And I broke it down here real quick on a piece of paper. This is just an average, average number just to get bare minimum. Then obviously you multiply that times two to, to hit 30. But bare minimum to survive is, is 15 to 20 families a month. And to do that, if you issue, if you, if you help 15 families in a month, say you're spending 1,000 a week on leads, 
that's 4,000 right there. You're down to, to 11 families helped. Uh, say you set aside 20% for taxes, you're down to eight families helped. Um, just say 3,000 for rent, mortgage, food, gas, cost of living, you're down to five families helped. Um, and 20% set aside for chargebacks, you're down to two families helped for an entire month. And that's just, that's just on the low end. So bare minimum, you need to help 15 to 20. Now to reverse that to hit 30, you need to double those numbers. And to double those numbers, break it down into a simple rule of eight. You have eight appointments in a day, two of them are gonna no-show you, two of them are gonna say no, two of them are gonna reschedule, and two of them are gonna buy. That's a 25% closing ratio. In order to help 35 families a month, or 30 families a month with, with that math, that's eight appointments a day, four days a week, 32 appointments a week, you're submitting, you're helping eight families a week at a 25% close ratio, and that's 32 in a month. So I know that was, that was really fast, but um, it really comes down to, you know, setting eight appointments a day for, for the four run days if you're doing in-home. So dial on Monday, set eight appointments for Tuesday, eight appointments for Wednesday, and then dial on Thursday, set eight appointments for Friday, eight appointments for Saturday. At a 25% close ratio, you're going to help 32 families at the end of the month. And if you're not doing that, it's because you're, you're either not full-time and you're doing this part-time or you're just not working. And if you're not working and you're doing this full-time and you're not helping at least 20 to 30 families a month, you need to quit because you're just hurting yourself in, in the long run. That's, that's yeah. Yeah. If we, if we look at that, honestly, guys, I mean, 25% closing ratio really is not, it's not crazy. It's not at all. Um, and what's crazy is that everybody on this call probably started out at a 25% closing ratio, but I could say that, you know, Joseph probably closes six, seven out of 10 families that he sits with. Mike closes like 11 out of 10 families that he sits with, you know, so at the end of the day, you have to just understand that you also can get better. So this is Joseph saying, hey, if I run eight appointments a day, four days a week, I'll hit 32 families, you know, a week. And, you know, this percentage is going to say no, this percentage is going to no show. And then there's going to be a handful of people that they're buyers because they bought leads. That's the difference between friends and family and leads, guys, is friends and family. I'm saying, hey, I just started my new career. Please buy life insurance. Here's why it's so important. I am convincing them, even though they love me, trust me, respect me. I am saying, here's why you need to buy life insurance versus a lead says, Hey, I already know why I need to buy life insurance. I'm just looking for someone to help me and not make it feel weird and not make it feel scammy and salesy. So if you just break down the numbers, it all being a numbers game, at the end of the day, you've got 32 people in a week that have requested the information. There's a strong possibility that 25% of them want the insurance. And the only way you're not going to help 25% of the people is if you mess it up. Now, Joseph got the six or seven out of 10 by getting better. So talk to us a little bit about that, Joseph. You've gotten better with your ROI. You've gotten better with your skill set. You know, what does it really look like for you to gain the most out of this, you know, and take that and you've been, you know, getting your eight appointments, you know, per, per run day for a while, but how did you go from, you know, just barely surviving to starting to thrive? You know, what did that look like? Yes. Yeah, so, so in the beginning, I came from an investing background. So I understood investing in your business. I just went way too far with that. And I was a little careless with about how much I put in. Um, before I was, I would, I had my reps to, to increase my closing ratio. So I was spending 2,500 to three grand a week, which is what top producers spend, you know, to write massive amounts. And I wasn't closing what they were closing. So I was hurting myself. So once I cut back my spending, I started buying older leads, same type of leads, just older leads. So I just tweaked my phone script a little bit to fit that. And I was able to book the same amount of appointments, spend half the money. Now I'm only spending $800 to $1,000 per week. And I'm, I'm increasing that slowly as my, my closing ratio goes up to match that. But in the beginning, I would say start out on older leads to get your reps in. I buy 121 months. And with discounts, I bought 121 months this morning with a 40% discount and I spent 290 bucks for 120 leads. Like that's crazy good. And if, if, you, if you book your amount of appointments, you're gonna have to work them a little harder because they're age, but in the beginning, you're gonna have to work harder anyway till you, till you earn the right not to 
to go as, as hard if that I mean you still need to go hard but it'll be yeah. easier to close no, that makes perfect sense. I mean, Grady talked in boot camp about that time money pendulum. And it's like in the beginning, you have a lot of time and not a lot of money. So you have to have a long dial day to book up 16 appointments, eight appointments for the next two days. It's going to probably take you all day versus you get a little bit of money. And now you're in your, your closing ratio also goes up because you got your, your reps in working the older leads, you know, a mix of old leads and brand new leads. You now have increased your ROI. So now you go from closing 25% to, you know, and when you do, when you close 25% of the people you sit with and you only spent $209 on leads, that's huge ROI. Now you go from 25% to 45% of the people you sit with and you mix in some newer leads. Now, when you mix in those newer leads, because now you're at 45%, that additional closing percentage, because you got better, your ROI goes up. Whereas if you're closing 25% on a higher lead spend, you're like, okay, where's my ROI? So, so that's awesome because obviously you got you know better and better and better throughout this process. So, you know, Joseph, any final thoughts for you? Um, you know, you've been working your butt off here. You know, you're in the office every single week. You're pretty much one of the first people there and one of the last people to leave every single week. You're in a, you're in an office dialing live and you're on live dials at the same time. You know, you love to be plugged in. Um, you know, for anybody out there who maybe, you know, doesn't come into an office, doesn't join live dials, any advice for them on kind of what that's done for you and how it's held you accountable? I think that that's, that's literally 80% of the reason why I've, I've, I've been successful is because of being around Mike Brody, Daniel Broadway, all the guys down here in the office, when you're around everybody, it's like going to, going to convention, going to conference every single dial day because you get, you get fired up, you get invigorated, everybody's bouncing ideas off of each other. You get to hear other people dial. You get to hear the rebuttals and overcoming objections. You speed up your learning curve exponentially by being around the fire. You know, if, if, you, if you go away from the fire, you're going to get cold and, and your sales are going to go down. Same with being plugged in, listening to podcasts and all that stuff. Stay plugged in. If you're actually serious about this, I don't understand why you wouldn't stay plugged in. I mean, it, it, when you see the, the in-game integrity, like that should be enough right there. Or just to be able to provide for your family, because if you're not providing for your family and you're not helping families, you're not helping anybody and you shouldn't be here. Love it, man. Joseph, thank you so much. You absolutely crushed that. Everybody throw a J whip in the comments if you think that Joseph went ahead and crushed it. All right, let's go ahead and bring on our next uh, special guest, Mr. Brody Pompey. He is a former race car driver turned insurance broker. Love this guy. He is a very, very hard worker, and he's somebody that, um, again, student of the game. I think you guys are going to see a theme of this call. Everybody on this call has been a student of the game. Um, so Brody, what's going on, man? It's out here in the office working hard. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm excited to see you. Happy to have you on, uh, share with us your thoughts, man. How do we thrive here? Not just survive. Um, you have to set realistic expectations for yourself. Uh, I think people, uh, myself included, um, we all come from like a W2 standpoint where we're kind of minimalist, um, and the harder you strive and the harder you go in that setting, like there's a ceiling, whereas here, like you set your own ceiling. So uh, people come into it and they think they deserve a break because now we're 1099. Uh, we set our own schedules and things. So they roll in. I can do this part time and they end up hurting themselves. So um, I think the best way to, to thrive here is set your ceiling and then double it because your expectation of yourself is based on your old employer's expectation, not what you need to thrive here. Um, when I started out, I let everything get in my way, honestly. Um, dogs getting sick, uh, cars breaking down, like everything. And now that I've been here a while, I understand that like I would walk 100 miles with no shoes to get to somebody's house to go help that family because I know it's going to help my family. And that's the mentality you need to have. Um, I think people also get them, themselves in trouble uh, with that minimalist uh, mentality. Uh, think about it this way. So like leads, um, say you have to drive somewhere long distance um, to get wherever you're going, right? And you can fill your tank once and get there, right? No stops. But a bunch of people, myself included, when I started out, they're like, oh, I'm gonna put just like a couple splashes of gas in here and I'll, I'll find another gas station as I go. And then you're panicking as you're going because 
you just pass that exit and you're trying to like look at your gas gauge and see how far you can go and you get to the next exit and now gas is like a dollar a gallon more and you're freaking out as it is so you stop like five times to get to your destination if people would just fill their tank the first time and get to the destination they're going to cause like this whole chain reaction of success not guaranteed obviously because you have to still work your tail off and there are variables but you're going to put yourself in a much better position filling that tank one time and expedite your learning curve it's powerful bro that's really powerful i never heard that analogy before i definitely have been that guy who just tried to put a few splashes in my gas tank and see where i could make it and i felt i felt that panic set in before when you're in that panic mode you're also selling out of desperation. I think that's really important. I mean, I know that you've been there before where you felt like you were selling out of desperation. What does a client feel? You know, obviously like you can be as polished as you want to be, but the client, there's something that happens. We talk about commission breath. It's so stinky that they can smell it even through the phone. So, I mean, what does it feel like when you're dialing from a point of desperation versus a point of confidence? Because I've got a hundred, 200 names and numbers here sitting in front of me. Anything in life, if you go into it on your heels, you're already losing. Like always, no matter what. Like dialing, trying to set appointments. If not, you're on your heels, you only got half as many leads as you needed because you thought that you could you could hustle your way out of that and you start on your heels, you're going to be like throwing Hail Marys all day and not setting solid appointments. And then that's going to transition into your run day the next couple of days. And you're going to be like, why the heck aren't these people showing up? Well, you set yourself up for failure right off the bat on your heels rather than just being on the balls of your feet ready to rock and roll. That goes with what we're doing, sports. Like you don't see people running backwards down the basketball court trying to like outrun everybody. No, they're running, facing forward, getting after it. So we have a system here. We have managers who have waded through the mud and maybe made some mistakes right away. Don't fall into that. Listen, because everybody here wants us like each other to win. Follow the system, plug in and get after it. And your learning curve, like I said, is just going to be exponentially quicker. Absolutely, bro. You, you mentioned that, you know, it's like throwing Hail Marys, you know, every single time. And I think that's also a kind of a powerful analogy. If anybody doesn't watch football, Hail Marys win, you know, just send everyone down the field and we're just going to toss the ball 90 yards up in the air and hope someone jumps for it and we get a touchdown versus the basics like what wins a football game what wins a basketball game what wins a baseball game it's you know it's base hits it's not grand slams if everybody's hitting for a grand slam every time you're going to get a bunch of strikeouts versus a bunch of base hits moving people around you know hey five yards here ten yards here you know fundamental layups versus hey we're going to shoot half court shots every single time and i kind of take a hail mary a half court shot you know swinging for grand slams is like you know Hey, you, yo, you, you, you might be home. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna put you down here for 315 and, and I'll be there. You know, it's like you start just booking appointments that you really shouldn't have booked. Whereas if you just have the numbers in your favor and you stick to the fundamentals, you know, then at that point, you know, you're going to set yourself up for success. So, you know, Brody, what's some of the top things that you've kind of learned through trial and error? You know, you've got your butt kicked, you've gone out there and you know, you've helped, you know, 10, 20 families in a week. And you've also been the guy who went, you know, one for 30 in a week. You know, you, you felt the extreme difference of being on top of the mountain and getting kicked in the stomach. You know, what, what are some things you've maybe learned from a trial and error perspective uh, about, you know, what works, what doesn't work and just how to, how to stay level in this thing? Yeah. So I'm going to take a big shot at myself right now and other people like me. I took pride in being an overthinker when I started this business, like, oh, I'm the biggest overthinker in the world. Like I got spreadsheets for this. I it kills you. Don't take pride in that. Take pride in simplicity, following the system and helping the people. Because if you look at people like Josh and yourself and Mike and Joe, all these, all these successful people on here, you see them getting these Hail Mary results, what you think is a Hail Mary, which are helping a bunch of families in one home, having big results weekly. It's not because of the Hail Marys. It's the result of the basics and doing the basics at an extremely high level and leveraging all that to put yourself in a winning position. So do not take pride in being an overthinker. Just shut your brain off, follow the system and work your tail off and no guarantees, but we have the system here to win. So just work. 
That's a fact. I mean, when you see Tom Brady throwing up a Hail Mary with two minutes left and him, you know, getting that touchdown pass, that wasn't because he just threw it up and prayed that it was going to land where he wanted it to land. It's because he's literally thrown that pass a thousand times. So when you see a top producer go out and help, you know, 10, 15, 20 families in a weekend, they're not throwing Hail Marys. They're putting up basics. You look at the numbers that Joseph just did, that top producer, they went through the exact same numbers. They had eight appointments in a day. Two of them no showed them. Two of them said no. And then they maybe, they helped four families, you know, or they, they sat in four homes and they sold three out of four, you know, but then they got better. So their premium gets higher because they learned how to drive value. How do they get good at driving value? Well, hey, everybody on this call has probably sat on a combined 3,000 appointments or more. That's how you learn how to drive value. That's how you take the basics from, you know, a, the, making a, basically a Hail Mary look basic. And everybody else, they see that and they go, okay, I could never do that. Well, I promise you, if you go run 100 appointments in the next, you know, 45 days, you'll figure out how to do that. So Brody, we appreciate you, man. You absolutely crushed that. Drop a, drop a BP in the comments if you guys got any value out of what Brody said there. And we're going to go ahead and bring on our last speaker. All right, Mike Curry, what's going on, man? So, man, I hate following up that. Yes, we always make you uh, have to speak after the best person. So we appreciate you being on here, man. Um, dude, when you hear not just surviving in this business, like you've survived and you've thrived, what does is, what is just surviving look like and feel like in this business? It sucks, to be honest with you. Like it sucks. It sucks to... Uh to just barely get by. And a lot of it's caused by, you know, our own lack of effort, putting yourself in those situations. I mean, I did that all, all year last year, repeatedly, you know, you, you, there's comes a point where you get really comfortable, right? Cause you, you know, you're like, you, your skill starts to increase. And then, you know, that's, that's where it gets dangerous, right? It's like, Oh, I don't, you know, I can take a few days off. Why? Because I know I can help everybody I sit with. Well, what if you don't get to sit with somebody? And everybody cancels at the same time, right? Because it doesn't, it's not just like one for one off, right? It's like, it's always opposite extremes. So I think that's the difference in thriving is just staying consistent. Yeah, absolutely, man. So now, you know, in opposition to that, you know, what does it look like to thrive in this business and how does that feel? And what kind of confidence does that bring you when you know you've got, you know, all, all the things are lined up perfectly. The activities in your favor, the, the attitude is right. You're consistent. You're working weekends, you know, what does that look like? Yeah, well, you just get on this extreme, like, high, right? Like, the, the, there's just something about when everything is going right for you. Um, it's like th this, there's this extreme amount of confidence, and you ride this wave. And I feel like, Jamie, you've been on it for like the last month and a half, but <laughs> you just ride this wave of like, everyone wants me to come over and wants me to help them. And nobody's turning you down. And man, when you get on those streaks, it's really hard unless you just stop. It, it's, it's crazy the momentum that you can gain in this business, man. And that and it starts to stack up and you start to really help a lot of people really quickly and a lot in one day. It's just like that momentum drives you. And it's just like, you know, it's like Brody was kind of saying with that analogy, but it's just keeping the foot on the gas. Because, right, I mean, what's the hardest part is when you're first taking off, right? It's like trying to push a car right? It's hard to push the car until you get it going. And it's like, it's almost effortless if you keep going, but if you keep letting it stop, dude, there's no reason. It just takes time. And, and, and honestly, it wears you out. Yeah. And I mean, you taught me this, like everything in this business happens in streaks, the good stuff, the bad stuff, it, it all happens in streaks. I mean, I've seen Mike go 23 for 24 and I've also seen Mike go 0 for 21. You know, and he's seen me do the exact same thing. So at the end of the day, this business all happens in streaks and when you take time off, when you take two weeks off, it's happened to me many, many times, even when it's just, you know, Hey, you know, four days off because you don't know, have a Christmas trip planned with the family. It's just, you, you get out of that flow state. You get out of that in the zone where you're just on point with your word tracks and, you know, things change or, you know, you got to charge back and now you're selling from a point of desperation. So, I mean, Mike, talk to us about, you know, times when you've had a really bad streak and what you've done to kind of snap yourself out of that and what you've maybe done to get yourself back on track and back into that flow state. Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's like, it comes down to habits, right? Like, like people don't decide their future. They decide their habits and then the habits decide the future. I saw that today. Sean posted that. 
And it's like, if, if you're, if you're constantly plugged in, right. It's, it's, it's really hard to, to, to keep picking up where you left off. Right. So it's, it's, you're constantly plugged into live dials, constantly plugged into podcasts, you know, booking your appointment, setting activity goals. Like that's where you thrive. And it's like, the more that you're, you're out of that realm, it's really hard to get back into it. Right. So talk to us about work in the weekends. So yes. how important is that? Uh, you know, we see some people take it really seriously. Some people don't. And I'd love just your perspective as well. You know, you've transitioned from in the field every single Saturday, no matter what, you know, posting selfies in the car, driving around to, you know, now you're doing the telesales route. And I think that as a company with telesales, there's so much that can get done Monday through Friday that a lot of us have kind of taken our foot off the gas on Saturdays. Just what's your perspective on the weekends, whether it's someone who's out in the field, why is that so important? And you know, what's your perspective from a telesales route of why Saturday can still be a powerful day? Yeah. So, I mean, weekends are where you sit with the most families. People are the happiest, right? So it's like, like if I was going to work a week and only work two days, it would be Friday, Saturday. Like if any time I was going to take off, it would be, it would be Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Like if um, weekends, it's like, like you have to sacrifice a little bit. And, but the reward is like in, insane, right? And you go out, it's like, you, you know, on your dial days, right? Like you call people, most people are home on the weekends. You're not fighting with work schedules, right? Most people are home all day Saturday. You can fit them in. So, you know, weekends for me, I, I, if it wasn't for weekends, I mean, I definitely wouldn't have hit Hall of Fame or helped 400 families. Like there's no way in, in the world, right? Like I, I never would have done that. Um, so especially, you know, working three versus four, like if you, if you skip Saturday, you mess all of those numbers up that Joseph just laid out for you. Right. So, and it's like, most of us aren't good enough, you know, especially in the in, you know, first three to four months to really be able to dictate when you can and can't work. And all you're doing is just risking, you know, yourself falling backwards and, and being out of business. So on the telesales side, um, just to be honest with like, it's kind of been difficult, not so much Saturdays, but, um, it's like, I'm already getting an extra day, like day five, right? Cause I don't have dial days. Every day is a dial day. So I, I dial in the mornings, book appointments, run appointments in the afternoon. So it's like, if I'm booking eight appointments, I'm, you know, I'm already up, you know, 35, I'm already up an extra five appointments before Saturday comes. So I think that depending on where you're at and what your goals are, right. If you're building a team, it can be a flex day, it can be a recruit day, you know, where you actually dive it. I mean, you're working, right. But if, you know, if you're not actively like, got a a team that's, you know, out helping families all day, every day. Like, I mean, realistically, like that's the best day to work. You call in the morning. I did this past week. I called in the morning, you know, booked afternoon appointments and a lot of people are home and answering the phone and, and, you know, around the house doing yard work, whatever, especially in, you know, springtime. So I think weekends, again, like if you're not working weekends, then you'll probably not make it here because that's when most of the families that I help come is on the weekends. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's like in the beginning, you didn't have a choice because you were like, I got four days to work this week and I need to see as many families as possible so that I can cut that learning curve down. And it's like, now again, you sat on a thousand appointments. So in sitting on a thousand appointments, you now have confidence. I can go and I can work Monday through Friday and I can take care of my family and I can help enough families. But again, it's like, it's one of those things where, you know, you have a new agent who maybe looks at a seasoned agent and they look at a, you know, an agency manager who only sells two days a week and they go, I can do that too. But the difference is the agency manager who only sells two days a week and helps 15 families during those two days, Friday, Saturday, that's not what you should be doing. You should be looking at not, you know, we, you hear the saying, do what they do, say what they say, get what they get. That's true up to a point. But if you look at like a Grady Polson, should you be doing what Grady Polson is doing today right now when you're starting your business? No, Grady's an integrity partner. He has different responsibilities. So it should be do what they did, say what they said, and then you'll get what they got. And I think that's super important that every single person that you're trying to emulate, look back to when they were in the same position as you. Who do you listen to? People who've done what you're trying to do. That's all that Mike did. That's all that Josh did. That's all that Joseph, that's all that Brody did is they emulated someone who is doing and had already done what they were trying to do. So Mike, who are some people that you emulated in the beginning, who are some people you listen to podcast wise that kind of gave you this mentality around activity that gave you this mentality around focus, you know, who are some of the main people that maybe you'd suggest that some of these people plug into? 
Yeah, so I mean, mainly for for live dials and stuff, it was you, right? For dialing the phones. Um, as far as podcasts, yeah, I think um, so. I kind of evolved over the year, so I've always been a huge Sean Mike fan. I think he's massively, massively underrated, and I think that my everything about me as a person, whether it's helping families grow in an agency, helping agents, um, all of it, literally doubled in production and like self growth. By just like I could turn everybody off in this world and just listen to Sean Mike and be twice the person I am today. And th- when I started doing that and just listening, like the simplicity in that guy's life, like I I do not consider myself an overthinker at all. However, compared to him, I'm an overthinker, right? So like I all like I plug into there's two videos. There's the dialing the phone, the psychology of dialing the phones with him and Dominique Rogers. And there's the psychology of the sale. And I think that everyone should watch that video until you get all of that thinking out of your head, because it's really that like this business is so freaking simple. It's not even funny. And people do everything in their world, in their imagination to make this hard. Like they try, it's just, it can't be that simple. Right. You know, so they'll, they'll try 30 different scripts, you know, they'll try to uh, book less appointments. You know, it's just rebellious nature, right? It's like rebellion. They're, they're not following, I know they're not following the path. It's like, you already have it laid out to you exactly what to do, when to do it, be on live dials at eight. Nobody's on live dials at eight. Very few, right? Like it's so simple. It's just a habit that you have to create, right? Listen to podcasts while you're in the car. When you're not talking to agents, most people don't do it. They rather listen to music, set activity goals, actually hold yourself to those standards, right? We all preach 15 appointments on a dial day. How many actually get 15? We stop early. Oh, well, I'm good, right? But if you knew all that you're, you know, the families that you were going to help is after 10, you, you don't start until you're at 10, right? But, you know, everyone knows better when they're new and they're going to figure it out. They're going to go on vacation. They're going to, you know, take a week off and, you know, like I do, right? And, you know, I'll make up for it next week. And like, and then it just hits you. And you're like, oh, wow, they were right. (laughs) You know, and it's like, no one wants to, everyone wants to do it. Everyone wants to sacrifice. Everyone says they're going to die until 15. Everyone says they're going to book 30 appointments a week. Everyone says they're going to work Saturdays. Everyone says they're going to be on live dials. And then lo and behold, there's 94 people here, and I guarantee you 30 wasn't on live dials today. 30, not even a third, right? Like, it's not that difficult, but people still want to choose to do it their own way. And it's like, it may or may not work. All I know is if I have a GPS and it says, go this way and turn right on that, I don't care. Like, you guys are so infatuated with learning the directions and what, why do I have to turn right there? And why do I have to turn left there? And why do, why can't I go on this, you know, on this road? And it's like, just follow the stupid set. Like, I know that sounds like, but it's that simple. Just like, don't even pay attention to what it said. Just go straight and turn right when it's time to turn right. And that's all you have to do. And like Brody said, have some gas in your car and you won't break down and you'll make it. Like, it's not that difficult, but people literally will think their way out of this business. So, I mean, in, in hearing that, what that sounds like to me is that most people will not be here a year from now. No, unfortunately. And, and it's sad because everyone has the opportunity to be. Mm. Every single person. So final couple pieces of advice. How can someone be here a year from now and not just be here a year from now, just barely scraping by, but be here a year from now and they have put more money in their bank account than they've ever put in their, in their bank account. They've invested more into a business than they've ever invested into a business. They have done more for families, served more people, you know, proven to their family that they can do these amazing things and not just survive because you can be here. This can be, I've heard this can be the worst sales job in the world or the best sales job in, in the world. And there's a lot of people who you guys are here and it's the worst sales job in the world for you. This can be the best. So Mike, how, how can this be something where someone looks back a year from now and they say, man, I'm glad that I put in the work. It all starts right here. Literally all right there. It's not, it's gotta be a non-negotiable. You literally got to make up in your mind that you're going to do any and everything that, that it takes to be successful. And it's being in the office until nine o'clock. It's dialing until 8 PM. It's working the week. Like it's, 
it's it probably gets old. It gets old me saying it, right? So I know it gets old hearing it, but it really isn't that deep. Like it's it, that's it's it's as simple as it gets. Like it's, dude. I used to have you know I repaired appliances and that was ten times harder than this. Like I actually had to know something, right? Like you literally have a script that you can read off until you figure it out. But if you're on live dials and you unmute, people can help you figure it out ten times faster. But instead, you'd rather spend a couple extra thousand dollars that month for no reason because you're not booking enough appointments. It's like it all comes back to like, are you willing to like be uncomfortable for 30 to 60 days? Like be uncomfortable. I promised myself when I started and I'm the like most awkward person. Like I remember like speaking on stage, being on this spot, like all of this stuff was like the most uncomfortable thing in the world for me. Right. But I promised myself day one, I had an opportunity. I saw this for what it's worth. I know how massive it's going to get. I know that we're on the best team within the best team within the best team of FFL. And I believe that wholeheartedly with our position within the company. Okay. Like everyone wants our team to have success. Trust me. Okay. And I made a promise to myself, any opportunity I had to get uncomfortable, I would say, yes, I didn't care what it was, any opportunity. And I've held that I've held true to that. And it's been really awkward. And sometimes halfway in tears because it's uncomfortable. Jamie knows the first time, you know, I had to, you know, it was just something stupid telling my story on stage, who cares. Right. But like, to me, that was like everything, you know? So I mean, it's just unnatural. The point is that you can like, you can do this, right. If you're willing to put in the work again, Joseph broke down how to get the, the amount of appointments, right. Brody broke down, right? Josh, everyone broke down what it takes. And it's not that difficult. You just have to plug in, but most people aren't willing to plug in. And it's because you don't really want it as bad as you say you do. Because if you did, you would do it. And that's all it comes down to, right? I told Jamie the other week, anytime I literally feel like, like I'm struggling, like I just stop thinking. Like every time that something's wrong, it's I'm thinking, I'm not working, right? Just make the next dial, go to the next house, right? Like it's all Easton Patton, 24 more hours. That's what it comes down to. And you just got to like, keep telling yourself that, right? Keep telling yourself, keep plugging in, keep doing it. And day in, day out, it just happens. And magically you, you develop this skill that I can help anybody I set with. And I know that, right? And that's a confidence I have, but it's been built over hundreds of appointments, sitting with people, right? Plugging in a lot, like all of it. So it comes down to just doing it, do the activity regardless of the results. And a year from now, you'll wake up and you'll be like, holy crap. Life-changing. It's life-changing if you take it seriously, guys. So Michael hate me for this, but drop a magic mic in the comments if you think okay. Mike went out there and killed it. That's what we call Mike when he goes out there and goes 23 for 24 in a week. So we appreciate you so much. Guys, I'm telling you, you don't have to just survive. You don't have to just survive. If you've just been surviving, reach out to somebody. Let's do a deep dive on your business. Let's figure out what's holding you back. Is it lead spend? Is it number of appointments? Is it closing ratio? What is it? Because you do not have to just survive. You can thrive here. This can be the best sales job on the planet, or it can be the worst sales job on the planet.